Here are common design for manufacturing mistakes that could ruin your printed circuit board. Now, as I run through these common mistakes, I'm going to show you how the Altair Pollux PCB Design Extension Tool detects these problems for you automatically. Keep in mind that these checks that I'm going to show you are actually more extensive and in-depth and actually check for design for manufacturing, whereas your PCB Design Software's normal design rule check uh, extension or tool does not check for these extensive design for manufacturing issues, except maybe a couple PCB design software that are out there, the top professional ones. Okay, so starting from mistake number five, let's talk about edge clearance. The problem with copper is that while it might be a great conductor, it's prone to corrosion from the environment. To deal with this, your manufacturer coats it with a protective material, but what happens if you don't leave enough space between the edge of your board and your copper? That protective coating that gets put on top of the copper can actually get cut off in the manufacturing process, exposing the copper underneath. And then you're just waiting for a disaster to happen, like an unintended short or corrosion. And shorts can be created when the electrical current going through the PCB is applied to the panel during the etching process. So we want PCB edge clearance, and that's a minimum of about 8 mils or 8 thousandths of an inch for outer layers and 12 mils or 12 thousandths of an inch for inner copper layers. For boards with scoring, which is a lot of them, you want at least half a millimeter or 20 thousandths of an inch on the outer and inner layers instead. So just go with 20 mils. Okay, so that's designed for manufacturing stake number five. Next is DFM mistake number four, acid traps. Okay, so here's the thing. If there's any copper feature that's bending below or underneath 90 degrees, so if you have an acute angle on your traces, it may act as an acid trap during PCB fabrication. This happens before washing when residual acid, if the manufacturer is using an older process, um, when older acid gets collected in these trapped areas and they're not clear away. This causes opens due to over etching or erosion from the acid. So you want to avoid acid traps uh, because today's printed circuit board traces are very thin. We're talking about like four thousandths of an inch, five thousandths of an inch, even lower like three mils or 2.5 mils. So avoid acute angles, avoid acid traps. Design for manufacturing mistake number three, silk screen. We've got to be very careful with silkscreen. Silkscreen gives valuable information like reference designators, where to remove and place components, where to test, and it's invaluable for hardware engineers along with the assembly sheet. You wouldn't normally think about it, but silkscreen, because of how it has this ink that's used to create it, it can cause a lot of issues for PCB fabrication. So check out the silk on the pad. You know, you want to watch out for that. You also want to avoid placing silkscreen text or anything on copper pads. This could melt the silkscreen epoxy resin material by being on the bare copper. Placing silkscreen on through holes or nearby them could cause soldering or fabrication problems as well. So here we see some of the silkscreen options. We also need to have the silkscreen oriented the right way. I'm talking about either 0 degrees or 90 degrees. Two different directions maximum though, but ideally only one direction so you don't have to keep turning your head left or right to get information on the PCB design. And here's the silk screen over here. Check the silk screen reference designator prefix, the name ordering for the silk screen, the silk to silk spacing, and so on. Also, don't put reference designators underneath components in your design since you won't be able to see them after part placement happens in the real PCB. You've got more silk screen things to think about. So silk line width and the height needed to be that, you know, that needs to be legible in whatever practical way that makes sense. Typically, we're talking about eight to 12 thousandths of an inch thickness on the silk screen text and lines in order for them to be legible. Okay, so that's enough about silk screen. Design for manufacturing mistake number two, component spacing. Placing your components too close to each other can cause multiple issues like inadequate human access for hardware test and rework engineers, 
cold solder joints due to uneven reflow and or hot air due to unbalanced air and temperature gradients. So let's take a look at this. We've got different distances we need to place components by whether they are through hole, surface mount, edge to edge, side to edge, side to side, and edge to side. These distances are in the IPC 2221 standard. Now that's kind of hard to say. Spacing is also varying depending on the PCB class and the design density. And in fact, there are multiple footprints created just for the different density classes alone. We're talking about least size footprint, most size footprint pattern, and the normalized or nominal size. That leads us to our number one mistake that you want to look out for in your PCB designs. Okay, DFM mistake number one, PCB footprints. So here's the thing, PCB design optimization starts in the CAD parts library. That's coming straight from Tom Hosher, the IPC 7351 footprint standard primary author. The thing is you wanna make sure footprints and land patterns have the right data so that the manufacturer doesn't make any mistakes or if they do it just like how you tell them to, to put the PCB footprints and components on the board, you don't want your board to have issues. If anything isn't clear, that will hold up the fabrication process immensely. Or even worse, they'll go through the PCB fabrication process, you get your boards back, now you gotta scrap the PCBs because the footprints are wrong. Okay, so in Altair Polex, here are just a few things you can check on your footprints. Now, why is this such a pain point, not only for manufacturers, but for engineers like myself? Starting off in hardware design, I made this mistake a couple of times. I became paranoid, actually. That's why having a good footprint and part library and footprint management and review system is crucial to saving hours or even days on your submitted design work. You can very well have the right parts in your bill of materials, but the wrong footprint. Simple mistakes multiply in the time lost down the road and any cost that you have to deal with if left unchecked. And also it's pretty embarrassing too if you make a mistake like that. People will start to think that you're not a professional. All right, so how did you score? Did you get a five out of five? Then congratulations, you're very likely seasoned and experienced as a PCB designer, maybe an expert. Now if you got a four out of five, you can easily use software like Altair Polex to make your life easier so that you can get five out of five results every time. If you got three or lower, then you might want to look at design for manufacturing principles and the IPC 2221 standard to gain the needed knowledge to design more boards with high yield and reliability, especially the IPC 7351 standard. Uh, I just keep it next to me all the time because I still remember my mistakes. And yeah, if you're a PCB designer looking to level up your skills, but you don't want to spend tons of time researching all the design for manufacturing rules to check for, you can take the shortcut and download the Altair Polex free trial. Just go ahead, you can start playing around with the different rules, parameters, and constraints to match your manufacturer's specifications, and you'll get to a level five out of five in no time without needing to put in tons or years of experience. All right, this is the shortcut to good DFM without all the old school hustle and bustle. So try out the Altair Polex tool. It's really convenient, I use it all the time. Okay, and if you don't know where to find Altair Polex or how to install it, I actually made an instructional video that you can click on here to get that going.